Welcome back to Meshman Studio. So in today's Random Man for Mori episode, we're gonna take a look at how that we can create material templates and why we create them. Let's jump over here and take a look at uh, some materials I've created here. It's a basic layered material. So we have two type of um, physical properties here in the mask. Let's take a look at a material template and first off, just take a look at the shader actually by default shader here. So if I go over here, we can see here we have the basic shader. So let's go into shader, take a look at the settings. So we have the inputs here. We have the different uh, settings here for the shader, for example, the specular here is using artistic. Let's set it to physical. And if I take the edge color and dial it up, you see we get specular. So what I when I create a template, for example, if I go here to my mask shelf here, the new extension pack, and take my physical spec template that I've created here and saved so I can reuse it and have a starting point. It's a way to define all of these values that's actually set in the shader and most of them is actually turning everything off. If I go here for clear code, for example, uh, let's say that I set it to physical, you see that the face and edge color is turned off and that is because when I create the material later on and I blend from one to the other, if I look in a template, that I've created where I've set all of these values from the shader, they will uh, layer properly. And that's not gonna be the case if you use the standard uh, material where we have all of the material properties in this form. Let's create a standard one. So type, tab, start type material. I'm gonna choose my piece of surface here from the list, compare. So this is a vanilla one. And you can see here, if I go in here, nothing is declared. And actually, if I uh, go back here to the main menu here and look at any of these settings on its own, just take a uh, diffuse color, you can see that the material template spits out transparency. And that might be a problem if you start to layer properties. For example, you have a template where you have a some kind of material coming out here in my case here diffuse color where i have a template i actually have a value it will uh, layer properly uh, so in my case here it will uh, be some kind of uh, metallic i think let's pipe it in here look at the shader you see here we have metal and if i will layer another material on top they will uh, blend properly but if i have something with transparency like this so imagine that I only mapped the material properties needed, but later on I added a property like clear coat, they will not layer properly, or it will be a bit strange results. You might have to dig into the template. But when you set up a template like this, where you have defined the initial state, at least you will have a good starting point and uh, less hassle in the end. So let's take a look here at some of the things I have added actually in my basic template here. So let's take this one for example here we have um, some global settings that I have added. So we can take a look at how those are set up here. So you see here spec or fudge. So let's go into my physical template and take a look at where this one is defined here, the spec or fudge. And it's actually, so this one is a uh, histogram scan node. So you can see here, I've made these two wrenches here, added those so they are visible to the outside of the node here. So let's actually add some more stuff to this. I wanna actually take my diffuse here, my diffuse template and extend it. I'm just gonna shuffle this over here and make some room here. I'm gonna continue to work on this. So I'm gonna place these settings here. This is my presets. And I actually wanna have a diffuse override. Let's say that I wanna be able to uh, have uh, ability to grade my diffuse channel coming in. So let's create a, uh, a grade plus. I'm just gonna add it here like so. And then I want an HSV as well. So this is uh, a way to uh, be able to have some kind of basic grading on my diffuse components. So I'm just gonna make a backdrop and name this. We wanna name the node now, HSV. 
diffuse hsv okay and then i want to promote the stuff here so first off set these to colors because i'm grading a color not a linear or a scalar i'm gonna just hit the branches here on all of these so they are promoted to the, the top group and the same for the diff hsv let's go back out here and take a look there's my template so we can see here now my diffuse uh, grades for example here i'm gonna order them in my templates i want to have them coming on the top there because it's kind of the top of the shader so i'm just gonna say up 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 so how i do that you see this p button here when I, in the attribute editor if i hit the p button you get the exposed parameters and i want the hsv as well uh, towards the top so we have first have the diffuse and the specular to my material there so now we have um, override that can grade uh, if you want to or we can do an hsv calculation then we have the spec error uh, spec or fudge so that's more like a raise and lower globally and we can also contrast it at the same time and this one the raise and lower bump so let's take a look inside my material we have these settings here so i'm having a, a raise and lower bump so what i did here is actually take a float node i have a float set to 0 0.5 that i've in turn remapped to um, from 0 to 1 and uh, i remapped in 0.8 to 1.2 and that's a way to limit the way we uh, can multiply the incoming value so even if i take this down to uh, you know zero it will start to uh, cut it off so this is just a way to actually limit my slider uh, slightly if that makes sense i hope actually uh, foundry can come up with um, input nodes that you can set a default value and also limit a range because that would make sense for me when i create my material so i can actually limit some of the settings if i have a material that i don't want uh, the user actually to go over a certain value would be nice so that's kind of what i did here but with my remap i would have like to have this functionality into one node later on the value there it's coming up by default is is going to be uh, one here and I multiply one by one so that's gonna be no change really so this is a multiply node and that's my uh, raise and lower globally raise and lower bump uh, displacement so I have the same for displacement and that's kind of uh, the basics of my template so that's now actually you see I added this diffuse here to my template and I want to propagate that out to my uh, physical template. Let's select it here and go back to my mask option here, mask shelf, select a node and then right click on my saved here and say uh, update from selection. Uh, yes, okay. So let's delete this now and uh, save it. Uh, bring this back and see what happens it should now have my update so now i have extended so let's take a look so you see my diffuse hsv and override for the diffuse is now saved here so whenever i want to start to build a material um, for example let's say that i want to uh, swap this template here into something else so let's take a look let's say that i want to make a brass or something I can go into my template and in the next episode I'm gonna take a look at how we can create a base color catalog but at the moment let's just take my base color catalog that I have saved here previously from my mask shelf let's say that I want to swap it to a brass I just uh, drag this in my brass base color catalog into my material now I can easily here just swap the inputs here And there we have my uh, beginning of my brass there. Yeah, so then we can start to uh, take my, uh, some stuff here from my shelf, for example, like a grunge map and start to uh, build a material. So let's see here, take something like this, build on top. And there we go. And set this to green. Yeah, so there you go. Uh, yeah, so that's kind of the basics of uh, my templates and actually let's take a look here quickly what can happen if you don't create a template 
for anything. So let's imagine that we have this um, material here now, my brass, and now you want to layer something that is not metallic on top and you haven't defined all of the the material properties. So create a material, uh, multi-merge, multi-channel merge, blend node here for my pixel surface, create a plastic really, really quick here. So first off, I just gonna take my base color here, my base material, pipe it into my uh, multi-merge there and then the multi-merge into the shader. It's gonna be no difference. So let's create a simple plastic here, but we don't define the extinction coefficient that's in my uh, uh, material here. So we have uh, the, just the default um, plastic without the extinction because plastic doesn't have extinction. So if you wouldn't define it, it could be this issue. So color, let's create uh, just a red plastic or something reddish um, let's say diffuse color and then we want to go in here to specular edge color I set this to white so index of refraction let's take this uh, float and set it to 1.45 or something like a plastic um, in my case now the brass would have extinction coefficient but imagine that we just map the, the the ports needed to create the plastic and essentially these four would create the plastic but when I start to layer it now it, it might become strange here so let's see here if I pipe it over there and you see it doesn't really work because first off uh, the roughness is just um, the same as the metallic and you see that we still have a metallic look so what you need to do, you need to map the same uh, inputs that you have in the material. So now let's go in and remedy that. So let's set uh, the extinction coefficient, for example. Let's create a black constant. You will see that now it will actually uh, start to look like a plastic when I do that. And there you go. You see the specular roughness is um, still the same as in the metallic so you see here my roughness is transparent there so it's gonna just be the same as the underlying metal uh, material you want to map all of the inputs you want to blend so that's therefore it's good to have a base material template so set this to 0.3 or something take a look and now it will actually replace going out now here and create a curvature or we can actually do a like this we want to take this one and radio transmitter we was just want to say that this is the curve mask i go back here and create the radio node hook it up to misc uh, connector transmitter curve mask and pipe it to the mask and now we will have the brass under a painted coating so let's take a look on the AC now it's working and uh, yeah so it's it's a good uh, thing to actually define a, a preset that will e enable blending between materials more easily because you you actually have everything set up so you will set it up as um, the initial state of the shader when it's everything is kind of turned on uh, off, off i mean that's uh, the important thing because then when you start to blend if you define something it will be on purpose and then it's going to be more predictable to drive different materials between each other so you if you would la layer a glass for example some of the if you have a diffuse component in one part of the material, a glass doesn't have diffuse, so it needs to be turned off. But if it will be transparent, it will essentially pass through what's underneath, and that might get you in trouble when you start to blend materials and you will scratch your head and wonder why the material doesn't uh, act uh, as it should. And that's that's more important when you have a complex material like the piece of surface where you actually have three different uh, specular lobes. We have diffuse, you have clear coat, iridescence, subsurface glass and everything. Uh, if you look at something more um, game uh, type or, uh, material, let's create something Unreal or Unreal Advanced. It's gonna be a lot less nodes here available. So 
let's see, uh, that's a big difference in the number of uh, available uh, effects here. So um, the metallic and the base and the roughness is essentially what you uh, map in most cases, but here you have a, a more complex setup. So that's uh, why I create a, a template. So I get me in a good starting point to actually start to build the materials on top of this. And you also get the setup here for free. You will always have the ability to uh, kind of tweak um, tile balls uh, slightly. Maybe you want to raise the gamma a bit in some cases or contrast uh, specular or something. And we have something already set up and that's a good bonus. You don't have to do that over and over. So yeah. Uh, and you um, can save it either to a uh, gizmo location uh, like uh, here under uh, the no graph or in my case my uh, templates I actually save them here in my mask shelf some of them um, so yeah um, that's uh, a way to uh, build a material template so yeah if you want to support my channel consider subscribing and hit the bell notifications so you're not missing the thing and also give me a comment uh, in the comment section so uh, yeah, I can see what you think and if something is unclear or uh, you can also leave a comment for future topics if you want to see something special I can make sure I can try and cover it in the upcoming uh, episodes yeah see you in the channel bye bye <music>